Hello and welcome back to Project 3A. In this video, I'm installing an electronic boost controller. So if you've installed a turbo and you want to control that boost or get more boost than the installed wastegate spring allows you to, you're going to need a way of controlling that. Now there are a few different ways to do this. To get more boost you can use a manual boost controller which is basically a turn knob connected to a spring and a ball bearing that bleeds a little bit of that boost pressure from between the turbo and the wastegate, fooling that wastegate and thinking there's less pressure than there actually is, thus creating more boost. But a more reliable way than that is an electronic boost controller controller and there are a few variations of these. You could get a boost controller off a different car which has an in and out and an exhaust which then connected to an aftermarket ECU you can control the boost or you can use a free port Mac valve which is more commonly used. But after a discussion with the person that is going to be tuning my car we settled on a four port Mac valve, which works slightly different to a three port. Now you can only use a four port Mac valve if you've got a dual port wastegate. And if you remember from a long time ago, I fitted a tile 44 mil external wastegate, which is dual port. Now I could just connect the top port of the wastegate to the compressor housing and just run whatever boost the external wastegate spring allows me to, which I believe from memory inside here is a seven pound spring. But since I want to control this more, I'm going to use both ports on this wastegate to control the boost and have more than 7 psi of boost. And that's where the 4 port MAC valve comes into play. A quick look at the MAC valve before we install it. This is a 4 port MAC valve. So it's got two ports this side and two ports that side, which are all labelled up on the back. A, B, inlet and exhaust. And it's got two mounting holes, which on the 4 port you'll have to use an M3 bolt. And we've got two wires. The ports themselves are 1 8 BSP, so a tapered fit thread. The inlet port is going to go to the compressor housing, and the exhaust port we're going to put a brass filter on. A is going to go to the top of the wastegate, and B is going to go to the bottom of the wastegate. Now let's find a place to install this. It doesn't really matter where in the engine bay you install this MAC valve, just remember you've got to run three vacuum lines and two wires. So I want to mount the MAC valve somewhere over this side of the engine bay, so I only run a short length of vacuum line. I could tuck it up in the arch here somewhere, but I've already got some coolant lines running there and I don't really want things to overlap here. I don't want to mount it too close to the hot side of the exhaust. I don't want anything to melt and I don't want it anywhere that it's going to be too exposed to the elements. So I'm thinking somewhere down here near the strut tower. After playing about with different positions of the Mac valve, I decided to weld a plate to my custom strut brace, which I haven't finished yet, but that should sit something like that. And the Mac valve will sit nicely on the plate there. A nice location to run the wires and the lines. And as you can see, the lines from the Mac valve to the wastegate and the compressor housing are going to be really short. But before I bolt that down onto the bracket, I need to get some fittings in the Mac valve. In the exhaust port, I'm going to put a brass filter. And in the others, I'm going to put a 6mm barb fitting. With these, because they are a self-sealing thread, there is no need for thread sealant and there's no need to over tighten them. But that's ready now to be bolted onto its bracket, like that. I think mounting it there is going to make it look really neat and tidy. Now for the lines. For the inlet port on the MAC valve, or the boost reference line, you could take a reference from anywhere in the boost system that is seeing boost. But undoubtedly, the easiest is on the compressor housing. A bit difficult to see, but it's right there. Instead of using vacuum hose, I'm actually using fuel hose. It's thicker, stronger, and can withstand a lot more. So I can put that straight on the inlet side of the MAC valve, and I've still got loads of room for an air filter here. There's no need for clamps or zip ties on these lines. Because it uses a barb fitting, these are fairly secure. The bottom side of the external wastegate, as in the side closest to the manifold, that line is going to the B port of the MAC valve, and the top is going to the A port. Because I've mounted the MAC valve to the chassis, and obviously the turbo and the wastegate are connected to the engine, I've allowed enough slack in these lines to allow for any engine movement. And none of the lines are rubbing up against anything, like the turbo or the chassis, so fingers crossed these lines should never let me down. But that is looking as neat as I could get it. 
Now on to the wiring side. And wiring this in does require you to have a standalone ECU. So we need to connect this to the ECU. Depending on what ECU you're running determines how you're going to wire this in. For a good percentage of the ECUs, the most common plug is the purge solenoid, which unfortunately is all the way over there, which is here. This would usually be connected to a purge solenoid, which is connected to some vacuum lines near the charcoal canister that used to be here. But we obviously don't need that charcoal canister anymore. In this plug, there are only two wires, a positive and a signal to the ECU, which is perfect. That could be reallocated to the Mac valve. So I'm just gonna cut this plug off and run a wire from that plug all the way around to the Mac valve. Now the Mac valve also has two wires on it and these are not polarity dependent, so they could go either way round. That's all wired in now. I've put a little bit of heat tube over the wires. It's not really necessary, but I thought it neatened it up a lot and it is near some heated components. I've put a waterproof quick connector here. So if I ever need to remove the Mac valve, I could quickly disconnect it. And the wires are run in the scuttle panel all the way over to the purge valve wires. And I've tucked that all neatly away so it's not catching on the wiper arms. All that's left to do is test to see whether the Mac valve is working. And to do that, you've got to plug in your laptop and connect it to the ECU and activate it to see whether the solenoid is clicking. Now, obviously to do that, you need an ECU and mine isn't installed yet, so I can't do that. That'll be coming in the near future. And because that bracket is all welded, I should really finish my custom strut brace and sort out all this engine spaghetti. So that's a four port Mac valve or boost controller installed, plumbed up and wired in. If this helped you install your boost controller, leave it in the comments down below. As per usual, like and share this video, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. engine spaghetti.